What's up, Zach here, and today I've got the all-new Adidas Barricade 13, and you're probably saying to yourself right now, he just said brand new, when this shoe looks almost identical to the last two Barricades that have come out, and you would be right, it does. However, Adidas has been making very incremental and subtle changes to each line of the Barricade over the last couple years, just giving it small tweaks, adding little things there, and it seems like that's what tennis players are wanting. They're wanting kind of one model of shoe they can kind of get a groove with and then have that shoe be updated throughout the years. Whereas it seems like in the running and in the basketball space, you know, those athletes are wanting kind of newer models with each model year. Whereas tennis players, same with tennis rackets. I know with me, with my rackets, I don't like things to change. I wish Head was still making the Flex Point Radical as, as crazy as that sounds. So I, I do understand where Adidas is coming from, where they're just making kind of small tweaks to the shoe. The, the small tweaks to this, I think some people are gonna like, some people may not, but it is definitely enough different in the Barricade 13 versus just the model that came out a few months ago. And a big thanks to Tennis Warehouse for sending me a pair of these over to check out. If you wanna buy a pair for yourself, I will have links in the description below. Now starting off in the uppers, this Barricade picks up where the immediate last one left off with a really aggressive drag guard here on the medial side where you get this TPU, basically mimicry of the outsole tread, this really aggressive Delta herringbone pattern, which is just awesome, number one for grip, but number two for durability. You look at the upper durability test on this 10 seconds high grit sandpaper, I mean, not even a millimeter of damage on this. This stuff is almost as hard as the rubber, as the added wear rubber on the bottom of it, which is really incredible. Now, as you move throughout the shoe, you do just get a really macro meshing that goes throughout the rest of the shoe with some molding and then TPU. The tongue is pretty thick and padded as well as the forefoot. Um, there are some holes in there for air exchange. However, you know, on the breathability test on this thing, they heated up 159.3 degrees. And what I noticed on the fog machine, on the breathability mapping on this, was that the fog did start to come out after a while. Like it took a little bit of time for that air to start sweeping through the shoe. So I think if you're wearing thinner socks with these, if you're not a super high volume foot, if you're not stuffing the shoe, you're gonna get sufficient air exchange, but the padding that they put in the barricade, you know, it's gonna do something, right? You're gonna have to sacrifice something for the padding. Now, when we talk about the fit of these, that does get a little bit better. So you are trading off a little bit. So, you know, we'll get to that when we get to the fifth section, but around the ankle collar, you also get the pods around Kager's triangle, both sides of your Achilles tendon, which do lock you into these things just really, really well. You do get a quasi runner's knot on the lateral side that meets up with just a standard lace eyelet on the medial side. It is reinforced with TPU to protect it from dragging or sliding, which I think is a pretty simple solution here for really extreme draggers or sliders. Same as you go throughout the lace line. Now remember, this lace line diverges laterally, which gives you a lot more push off force medially. Now we've seen this on previous barricades, except for previous barricades, the one before the last one had elastic lace eyelet. This one does not, same as the other one. This also has a really, really aggressive distal gusset in the tongue, which means that it's connected to the strobo board by this elastic netting, very distal in the forefoot. So you really do feel that cradling of your forefoot, which you know really you can tell the shoe is all meant for pivoting, which I think it does pretty darn well. Now, when you go into the midsole foam, kind of the same story with this. Now, number one, yeah, it has the same shank as previous barricades, it's got that torsion system, which goes from the rear foot, kind of really into the meat of the midfoot. Now this is bottom loaded, and which when we'll get to the speed ratio, I'll talk about this, but I am actually doing a new shank score on all shoes going into 2024. I will start to backdate it on the tennis shoe guide which is the Google sheet you can purchase down below uh, in the description. I will have, I will start backdating all these on that. So you will start to see that coming up soon, but for 2024 and on, uh, you will get a shank score to go along with the speed ratio. And I'll show you how that's gonna correlate in a minute when we get the outsole tread. But suffice to say, you got the same bottom loaded torsion system, but in the midsole foam, the meat of it, instead of bounce foam, you're getting repetitor and repetitor plus foam. Now that is just a pretty firm and pretty soft EVA combination. To me, it's just a more deadened feeling bounce foam. And you know, I, you know, if you look at it on the bounce height test, kind of tells the same story. 29 centimeters in the heel, 26 in the forefoot versus a bounce shoe that I just had, which was 34 and 30 that I did in the basketball space. You kind of see what the discrepancy is between those two foams. The thing is, is that 
Is that a bad thing or is that a good thing? I think a lot of people are gonna find that good and a lot of people are gonna find that bad. The, the reason that it's dual density, whereas it's a more stiff repetitor foam in the heel, is to give the heel a little bit more stability. And you know, I saw a lot of things I was looking up in the running space about repetitor foam because some of the Attistars have the repetitor combination foam too. And most of the reviewers on that didn't like it because of its north to south behavior and how it felt after mile after mile. But in the tennis space, it's a little bit different. And I think there's gonna be some people that like it a lot more than the bounce foam. So when we get to the playability section, we'll talk about it, but suffice to say, a little bit more of a deadened feeling barricade versus the, the two previous ones, and we'll get to the implications soon. And getting into the outsole tread, I've been really looking forward to doing an outsole tread of a tennis shoe in 2024, because I have a brand new test for the outsole treads, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but you know, what's, old is new again on the barricade it is the exact same outsole tread as the previous barricades pretty chunky herringbone on the lateral side then moving into more flat herringbone on the medial side and then of course it is flipped in the rear foot now the grip of these things pretty darn good even on slicker quartz I have set up here kind of a medium grit hardcore paint on just a concrete slab here to do a grip test. The same I do as the grip test on basketball shoes on the hardwood. Now this thing had a degree of slip of 40 degrees. Now let's compare to the Yonex uh, Fusion Rev 5 at 37 and then the Lacoste AGLT 23 Ultra at 42. Now remember the Lacoste has that little gritting pattern on it so it has macro and micro traction. So I, was, I wasn't surprised the Lacoste was one of the better ones out there, but the Barricade still getting 40 degrees of slip versus something like the Fusion Rev 5 at 37, which is pretty darn good. The New Balance 1007 comes in at 35 degrees. That kind of gives you a little bit of a, a taste of those. I will be putting all the degrees of slip once again in the tennis shoe guide. Once again, that's in the description below. I will be testing all of the shoes that are available right now that, that I have at my disposal. So you will be getting a much better sense of, of where all the shoes stack up in the weeks ahead. But Suffice to say, compared to the shoes that I've just done, this one was definitely at the higher end of grip. Once again, showing you it's kind of more aggressive movement capabilities, which is what you come to expect from a barricade. And speaking of that aggressive movement, if you look at the speed ratio on its own, they come in at a 1.84, which is, you know, not great because of the repetitor foam. However, I, like I said, I am doing a shank score, which is 0.1 for every category you see checked off on this list on the screen. Now on this one, it is just a bottom loaded shank, so it only gets one point for the actual make of the shank. However, it is double thickness, and you know it does span from the rear foot into the midfoot. However, it doesn't span from the rear foot to the midfoot on the bottom of the shoe, right? It spans it on the lateral side. That's more of a containing element, not necessarily a propulsive element. So I'm only gonna give it a 0.2. That does put it up to a 2.04 though, on the speed ratio, which is where I think they more belong because like I said, in terms of side to side quick speed, they're fantastic in terms of front to back, north to south speed. Like I said, they're not the greatest things out there. They are very bottom light, I will give them that, but in terms of a launch, yeah, I think 2.04 is pretty much where they sit. Now, if you look at the outsole durability test on these 10 seconds high script sandpaper, same as pretty much most Adidas outsole treads. You don't really even get a millimeter of damage. They come close to that millimeter of damage. The durometer is nice and high. If you are a dragger or a slider, these are one of the better shoes on the market right now. Previously, like the first barricade in this model, I didn't like because it only had that little piece of rubber here that came up on the uppers. So you're just going to destroy them. Whereas on these, you're actually getting grip from sliding. So in terms of sliding, dragging, these are one of the better ones out there. In terms of quick, short court speed, these are also one of the best ones out there. Hence why these were my number one shoe for pickleball as well last year. I finally figured out the fit of the barricade though and, and why it, it feels the way it does because I've been measuring the length and width of all the shoes. Once again, that'll also be in the tennis shoe guide. Uh, but I noticed, you know, the width of these is 9.4 centimeters for a men's 11 US, which is a pretty medium to wide shoe. So why do these still feel like a pretty hugging shoe on your foot? It's because the shoe is pretty short. It's only 28.4 centimeters for a men's 11, which is, is on the shorter end of shoes. Now on these ones, because the meshing in the uppers is, is a lot more forgiving because the gusset is more distal. It's not cramping the mid part of your shoe. These are much more forgiving. My size 2E foot, really did not have a problem in these. I, I couldn't believe it. It did not have an issue, even on, even on my left side, 
which is a little bit bigger. Narrow and medium foot, I think go true to size. A 2E, if you want a performance fit, I would say go true to size. If you want more room, go up one half size. A 4E, I think you can go up a size on a 4E. I think it depends on how long your toes are. If you've got a really long foot, then that's where you're probably gonna wanna be going up half sizes on this to get a better one-to-one -one fit on the shoe. However, if you do take this shoe true to size, you're getting number one, a little bit of weight reduction, number two, a lot more of a nimble shoe, more of like a Rafa Nadal fit on your shoe, which I really like. Someone with really longer toes or big bad hammering on their toes might not be able to do that, but somebody with a more rectus foot can. Now, in terms of the snake bitten foot, honestly, that repetitor foam is not the most forgiving underfoot. It's kind of like bounce foam, like I said, more dead end. I think a low profile orthotic in these does really well. A bulkier orthotic, I don't think you can put in this shoe just because of the low volume of this shoe. So I would say get a lower volume orthotic in these for sure, and you'll be rewarded with better fit, high volume, you're probably gonna start to have some issues. So, you know, like I said, along the lines of a lot of other barricades, this thing is meant for battle and it does that very well, but just don't expect it to be the most plush thing out there. It's not the Wave and Force Tour, it's not meant to be. <sighs> But finally getting into the playability of the Barricade 13, you know, is it any different from the last two? I would say, yeah. <sighs> and that's so, kind of weird to say because it looks so similar, but number one, the fit with this meshing on there, a little bit more comfortable. I mean, just a little bit. I mean, the last Barricade was okay. It wasn't that bad. It was the first one with the elastic laces that, that hurt to play in. This one, like I said, incrementally, just a little bit more forgiving but I think it's number one, the gusseting more distally in the shoe with the lockdown and the repetitor foam that does feel a little bit more bottom light. And yeah, it does feel a little more deadened, but you also get a little bit more court feel out of it. So, you know, when I was playing on these, I was playing on a court that was really dimly lit. I don't know if you noticed from the GoPro footage, but it was very dim. And it was kind of hard to keep you know, the ball in your strike zone just because it was, it was hard to see. I was able to make those extra little steps with this and get out of my own way and not miss hit the ball as much as I think I would have. You know, my dad and I playing that day, we were both saying it was just so hard to keep track of the ball, especially when we were playing points, you know, we were trying to beat each other. I, it, was, it was hard sometimes to track. And with these, I just felt, I just felt a lot more court presence on these. I felt like I could do a lot more with my feet and knees. I felt like I could just get myself out of awkward positions on these. And I think that's where these really started to come alive. Just in those scenarios where you needed all the footwork that you can get. Were they the fastest getting from the baseline to the service line, you know, serving and volleying? No. Um, I think with a more rigid orthotic, low profile rigid orthotic, I think you add a lot to that for sure. I think you get a little bit more of that spring back for sure. But in terms of that side to side movement, in terms of that quick movement, getting low for balls, or just like I said, just trying to make really quick, you know, a couple extra steps to get out of the way of the ball, a couple extra steps to line yourself up when, you know, when your eyes are maybe playing tricks on you or the overhead lights are playing tricks on you. This was just such a nice asset to have on foot. So I gotta say for this not being as much of a cosmetic update to the shoe, there are some incremental changes. And I think from the bounce version to the repetitor version, like I said, I think it, it, it's a decent update to the shoe. Some people are gonna like the more intimate court feel of this one. I think it really depends on what you want out of the shoe. This is definitely a player dependent shoe if you're gonna like the bounce version or the repetitor version. So love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, which one you're gonna get, if any at all, if you're going with something else, let me know down below. And if you wanna see one of the other brand new shoes that have just come out with just insane grip and insane side to side movement, the Yonex Fusion Rev 5 going to the knife, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you somewhere in the Sinkiverse.